Scientists from the United States and Africa are teaming up to combat a disease capable of decimating a region's poultry population. Newcastle disease, the stronger forms of which can kill more than half of unvaccinated birds, can be particularly difficult for producers in developing nations. In most cases, the real target for this work is going to be the smallholder farmers and the villagers. And so they're really having quite marginal uh, both economics and nutrition uh, within their family. And so if they lose half of a good protein source that they were going to depend on for that whole year, it's extremely devastating. The U.S. Agency for International Development's Feed the Future program has awarded the scientists a $6 million grant. The team will study the genetic makeup of various chickens to determine what particular genes make some poultry more resistant to Newcastle disease, the number one health issue affecting poultry production in Africa. Newcastle disease is a respiratory illness. Its symptoms include swelling around the eyes and twisting of the head and neck. The virus causes only mild symptoms in humans, namely pink eye. According to the World Animal Health Information database, nearly 150,000 chickens and other domestic birds died of Newcastle disease over the past two years. Another 1.5 million were destroyed or sent to the slaughterhouse to prevent the spread of the disease, which is highly contagious in birds. Cyprus, Israel, and Libya are among the countries affected recently. The last outbreak in the United States, just over a decade ago, affected poultry in Arizona, California, Nevada, and Texas. More than three million U.S. birds had to be destroyed. Live bird markets, such as this one, filmed by the research team in Tanzania in early 2014, bring poultry from various villages into contact, helping spread the disease. The weaker forms can be relatively well controlled with vaccination uh, and routinely in the U.S. vaccines are used to protect poultry uh, against this disease. But in developing parts of the world there's not enough infrastructure or there may not even be the pennies needed to buy uh, a vaccine to protect the birds. In addition to Iowa State University, the five-year study includes scientists from the University of California Davis, the University of Delaware, and in Africa, Sokoine University of Agriculture in Tanzania and the University of Ghana. The team will first study two lines of chickens, Leghorn, which are commonly used for egg production in the United States and are more susceptible to Newcastle disease, and Fayumi, which have origins in Egypt and are relatively resistant to the virus. Researchers are trying to pinpoint the combination of traits that appear to correspond with greater resistance. They will then analyze the DNA of individual chickens to understand how these seemingly relevant traits are passed on genetically. So once we have uh, information on which, what genetics uh, provides greater resistance to the disease, then we can go out and, and screen chickens and find the ones that have the right genes and then use those to breed the next generation of chickens. The scientists are looking for the same genetic makeup among African flocks in Africa to avoid introducing a breed which may not be as well adapted to the environment or with which African farmers may be unfamiliar. The team plans to also consider the chickens' resistance to heat and drought. They are interested in being sure that agriculture is ready to respond to uh, the climate change, which we anticipate is coming, uh, which will probably have more heat episodes in them. Scientists say this type of genomics work will likely lead to greater precision when breeding all kinds of livestock. It is a new field, but it's very rapidly uh, developing. Um, you know, the human genome was sequenced uh, the chicken genome was sequenced in 2004. The chicken was the first livestock species that, for which we got the whole genome decoded. Um, so, I mean, it's all within the last decade that things have started, but it's developing very, very quickly. Feed the Future, a U.S. government global hunger and food security initiative, is trying to emphasize genomics research in both crops 
and livestock. We have had livestock and animal science research in our portfolio for many years. However, recently we wanted to increase our investment in the animal science area. And so this year we awarded two new Feed the Future Innovation Labs, one focused on poultry and one focused on a livestock vaccine. And it's an area we're considering and thinking about how to strengthen our investments to ensure that, that households across the countries where we work have access to uh, foods that are really, that have that high density of nutrition. In this case, the more resistant chickens will be provided to villagers in Africa, typically in association with a school. The children, as well as local women, will be trained on proper care of the birds. Livestock in general, not just poultry, are kind of uh, sort of a, an investment. They're kind of, um, you can almost see them as a, a walking bank account. African women are more likely to be responsible for poultry rather than large livestock, and this research may ultimately help protect a source of income important to them and their families. Increasing our investments in, in productivity of, of animals and of fish is a way to both address nutrition, but also recognizes that animals are often a major asset to a household. And if they can increase the numbers of, of, of particular small animals that they keep, that gives them some resilience to, to economic stress. Uh, the importance is of, of having animals that can produce and can survive diseases is as great, if not greater, for the smallholder families than uh, compared to our industry because their livelihoods depend on it. Now, it's the same in, in, in North America, but it's life and death for, uh, for, for their children. For Market to Market, I'm Paul Yeager.